Hello and welcome back to the channel, Homegrown Slots. I'm Eric. Of course, I'm your host. Today we're going to talk about the two most important things that you will purchase other than the machine itself. Without these two items, you can do very little. And by little, I mean adjust some volume and that's about it. Um, outside of look at some statistics, that type of thing. However, these two items, again, top of the list. After you acquire your machine, if you have any desire to make any changes whatsoever, these are the two items that you will need. Second most important, diagnostic key. This will get you out of a lot of trouble. Without this, you cannot remedy certain items um, in the platform. And I'll go into a little bit more about that here in a moment. The first most important item, and probably the second most expensive, aside from what you pay for the machine, is an e-key. The reason why it is expensive is because in order to obtain them, you have to have a casino license or a gaming license. Therefore, individuals such as myself cannot just go to IGT and say, hey, I want to buy an e-key. Now, you have to go to an individual who has access to them and can sell them third party. So, it's going to run you generally around $400. And that's just for the e-key. But this is what's required for you to do anything other than play the machine. If all you're looking to do, get at home, shovel in some $100 bills, play to your heart's content, more power to you. No e-keys are required or diagnostic keys are required to facilitate that piece. However, if you want to do, um, you know, uh, a Tito conversion or any of the games, adding new games, removing games, um, stuff of that nature, e-key, and I strongly suggest a diagnostic key. These are about 20 bucks if you have to buy one. Um, most of the people who sell you machines will just go ahead and give you one because they're usually top notch and they can be copied so it doesn't cost them anything. If you choose not to go that route and you want to make changes, again, the only items you can adjust are volume control. There are two ways to do that, but the first method gives you really no details whatsoever. So. I'm not going to show you that, but I'll tell you about it. And that is if you turn the jackpot key. If you turn the jackpot key, the main menu will come up. You will see some options, um, which are the same options that you'll see here momentarily whenever I show you the other way. Um, but this route gives you more access. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you have no credits in your machine whenever you're attempting to do this. So open up your lower access door and at the top of your top left corner of your CPU module or your brain box, there's a white button that is protruding. You'll feel it as you stick your hand up there amongst the wires. Press one time and it will bring up this menu. So this will give you access to accounting, um, game history, logs, out of service, which you can't really do anything with. Um, I'll show you why. Um, set up functions. So if you go here and you go to game, you go to enable, disable. I can view everything for all of the, the games, but I can't change anything. You'll notice that it's all grayed out. But if I go to machine, I've got access to all of these items. Um, if I go to volume, I've got complete control of all of the volume 
on the machine just by pressing that button. If that's your only concern, then save yourself $400. You don't need it. But again, if you want to do a Tito conversion, add a game, remove a game, anything of that nature, you have to have an E key. And if you're going to have an E key, I strongly suggest you need a diagnostic key. And the reason for that is because if you're toying around, adding games, right? That's assuming that you know what show boots are and everything is set up that way. Um, depending on what machine you buy, you'll know whether or not you have multi-game or not. Um, but if you are adding games, the machine won't know when your drive space is full. And that's problematic, right? Because whenever you get in here, it shows you how much NVRAM is available. Right now, mine's utilizing 62.7%. But what it doesn't tell you is how much space I've used up for where the games are installed. And this machine, the OS, or should I say um, AVP, the, the operating system, it doesn't care. Because whenever I go to install a game, which you'll see in an upcoming video, by the way, um, I boot up using the E key and the software key, and I don't even get to AVP. It just goes straight in and loads up the game and does what it wants to do. I don't get into AVP until I reboot the machine and I attempt to go configure it. That's whenever I'm using AVP. The problem with that is, is that you can blow out the segment that all of your games set on. And without this little boy, you're screwed. <laughs> um, and after you've done that two, three, six, 12 times, you learn real fast. Um, be cautious about the size of the games that you install on here. 3D games are huge, require a lot of space. So if you're like me and you have 3D screens and you have a lot of 3D games installed, that's going to be problematic. The amount of games that you can install and actually run in a single time are going to be a lot less. If you have a lot of real depth games, they're probably the second most um, as far as space required. And the reason why is because it utilizes functions that take up both screens. And real depth is exactly what it sounds like. And I can show you um, an example. So if I close, right, so I'm on a real depth game right now. So whenever you look at this, it's almost like you're looking at an S2000 or S3000 series machine where I have the front glass here and then it has the appearance of reels here. And, and it actually, whenever you're looking at it from my angle, it's three dimensional. So it looks like real strips behind glass. So that's what a real depth game is. And then you have your your basics, which are just your video games, like your Pharaoh's Fortune and stuff of that nature, um, which in my case, I have roughly 65, almost 70 games installed on this device. I am at the max capacity with the, the particular games that I have because I have several 3D games installed. Um, I know this because I've attempted to install additional games. Matter of fact, I uninstalled probably six games in an attempt to install one game, um, which was Kitty Glitter. And no luck. Every time I install it, it would, it would blow out the drive. Um, nice part about it is, is once you remove your problematic game with your, with your Diag key, then you have the fun of going back and enabling and configuring every single game on your device. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you want to play around and you want to toy around with, hey, how many games can I load up just to see what you can do? Okay, that's fine. 
keep track of them, do them individually. Don't do 15 at a time because the system will allow you to do that up to 15 games at one time. Um, you know, you're going to end up blowing out the data space. So um, just be prepared because if you've configured anything, you're going to have to go back and reconfigure it all over again. I guarantee it. I know because I've done it. Not once, not twice, but seven times. And after you go through and you set up 65 games, you learn real fast. Don't mess with it. <laughs> know your limitation, right? Um, but that's it. Again, e-key and diagnostic key. Those are the two items that you want. So this is Eric with Homegrown Slots. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you find this content informational and educational. And by all means, if there are any questions, feel free to drop those down here in the comment section below. And I will attempt to answer them to the best of my ability. Till next time, have a great day. We'll see you on the other side. Peace.